Neighborhood Coordinating Council update Suncrest Neighborhood Association. And we have Nancy Gantz is going to do a presentation for us. I just want to mention that, that we do have copies of guidelines in associations, I believe, on a website that the city has um, that Mr. Burns can give you, that we all use. Um, well, um, it's nice to be here tonight, and it's very nice to be able to um, brag about this neighborhood association <coughs> uh, meeting. Thank you for hitting the lights, and um, welcome all the students here. This is one of the exciting things about Morgantown. We have a lot of involvement with our communities, different segments, and this is one segment of, uh, well, there's seven different neighborhood associations in in currently right now in Morgantown and two more forming. Uh, but we also have a neighborhood coordinating council that meets once a month and uh, we met on November 14th and we discussed neighborhood concerns. On November 14th, um, we uh, very much complimented Jerome Park for the good things they've been doing there and they're actually having a potluck style dinner where students can eat free at Jones Church if any of you live in the um, um, neighborhood related to that near Jones Church, and that is, oh, help me, what Greenmont. is that? Greenmont. Greenmont, thank you, Greenmont. But well, we thank Jerome Park for what they were doing, but we also, um, so if any of you live in Greenmont, um, Greenmont, we have a free dinner there, available on December 11th, so on, at Jones Church, that's 333 Green Street. Um, I also a neighborhood coordinating council, um, Carrie Showalter, from, uh, who's the attorney at the university, came to speak on the ambassador program to reduce home visitor fan problems and ask the neighborhoods to be involved. Uh, but we kind of said we want to hear more about what that Goodwill Ambassador program is. Um, other things that came up um, were the police reported about the um, amount of overtime spent downtown late at night um, has come to 194,000 this year. And um, several of the neighborhoods suggested that we reduce the bar owner's time or the, the, that the bars close earlier, but we don't have any say in that, so that um, passed us by. There was also um, talk about the DOH being contacted for some bridge repair and some road repair before um, freezing times, and um, those are bridges that the students walk on also. So if you know of any bridges, please contact Jeff, because he's the one contacting the DOH. So those are the kinds of things we did at the Neighborhood Coordinating Council on November 14th. Now, um, this is my first time using this remote, so spare me. Uh, what we're gonna talk about today, and I'm very pleased to talk to the council people and to the people in TV land and to students about the good things going on in Suncrest. Um, Suncrest had some very early beginnings, and we tried to scan in <laughs> a picture of the early threshing floor of, Kreps, uh, of the Prex, Kreps family farm. And uh, so that is some of the early threshers. Now, I'm surprised they dressed like that for threshing, but I thought it was a great picture. Um, uh, Suncrest was actually the original site of a Fort Burroughs in 1774 at Windsor and Burroughs Street, which I thought was very interesting. Um, and then there were several farms there throughout the beginning of the century. Uh, but what's also very fun about um, Suncrest, which I'll show you in a minute, is that we're a Millennium Heritage site. Um, so the early beginnings were pasture land, then we developed um, as uh, our primary school was started in 1925, and I believe it was built by the CCC, and I think that's a very exciting historical thing. Um, it was incorporated as a separate town, um, and it actually thrived during the Depression. A lot of the homes there were built for employees of DuPont Works, um, and it, the, the DuPont Works put, um, and there are some very interesting houses that are made of, like there's three moose-type houses in Suncrest and so forth, which aren't in our historical tour, I don't know why. Um, but there were, um, and there's a lot of Gunnison homes, which were prefab homes of the day, so that's kind of fun. We do have a walking tour, which if you'd like, I have this brochure available to anybody interested. Um, we still have about uh, 300 of them left. Um, and I've done this walking tour several times. I've found it very interesting. I just want to highlight a little bit of this um, walking tour, which was made by the White House Millennial Commission. Uh, the restoration and renovation that's being done uh, on Laurel Street, the Gleitzman's home, is a, um, one of the houses that's been renovated there. 
Um, and then now there's a nice house on Junior that's been re renovated, but their picture isn't here because I didn't get their permission to talk tonight. But the uh, but the houses like on Mulberry, Oxford, and all are being restored and renovated in a very pleasant ma manner. Um, Suncrest is a place where a lot of people volunteer. Um, our garden club maintains some of the green quarters, and we're very proud of what they do. Um, Suncrest works. I'm very excited about how Suncrest works. In fact, this PowerPoint took about four of us to put together, and um, I think the people who worked with me have done a great job. Um, and every time a person in Suncrest steps forward, there's several of people to help them. So I'm very thankful for that. We're, our primary school uh, and our middle school have been top in state rankings. The middle school is now rated the top middle school in the state. It's been exemplary for 11 years. But what we have in Suncrest is highly prepared and educated members of boards, commissions, and committees in the city. And we have a tradition of civic engagement that's local, national, international. And so I just want to say about the local, that's our gardens and, uh, and scout involvement. The Suncrest Primary is a great example of that. The um, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts maintained a little teeny garden in front of our historic school. And right across from there is what I call the Power Corner. The other day when I was walking by the school at the corner, um, Alice Frost, who I don't know her age, but she's a senior citizen, was working with Girl Scouts planting bulbs. Then I look to the left and there's the Bagby home and they're involved greatly in the um, um, Botanic Garden. Then I looked to my right and there was a delivery of mulch taking place because the parents maintained the little, little park playground there. And so to me, that's the power of Suncrest and I'm very proud to speak about that. Suncrest Middle School, once again, is ranked top in the state. Um, we have go park concerts in the park where people of all ages come and thank, uh, and we're very thankful for the city for providing that funding. Um, of course, we have our Preps Park um, as you uh, know about, um, and a portion of that park now has um, now a daycare center, and a portion also has the um, WVU soccer field on it. So we're hoping to maintain this park for our youth for our residents. Um, what is Suncrest? We're seventh ward, um, all of seventh ward, and fourth portion, uh, portion of fourth ward. Um, we're all we're surrounded from Van Boris to Collins Ferry to University to 705 to Patterson to Star City and bordering the county. And um, we are, we are um, surrounded by um, people wanting to be in Suncrest, let me say. And in fact, uh, people who live outside of Suncrest are calling their development Suncrest because it's such a nice place to be. Um, so what we exist of is retired <coughs> university faculty and staff and you can see a wide variety of people and we seem to be able to work together to promote Suncrest interests. Um, we have, we're fun and family friendly, and of course the heading they put on there was fantastic. Um, what we've got here is we had a, a Gardens of the Mon tour last year where people could view other people in Suncrest gardens. That's taking place in South Park too. Um, and then I'm, I'm particularly proud of the things that occur at Halloween. Each of us has um, in certain areas, over 100 people at their doors. But what I liked about my door was the parents were dressed up, and the parents were all walking down the street and chatting too. And so it was a great family time. And then there was a lot of teenagers and some university students who came by, and we all embraced the, the moment of getting dressed up. So we really enjoyed that. So as I've mentioned, there's several portions of Suncrest. Um, uh, old Suncrest News, Suncrest, Suncrest Edition, Flats, Virginia Manor, and so forth. Um, and in each one of these um, areas, we have people involved in various groups. <coughs> I was saying that we were involved in national organizations and international. Um, the Rotary Club got involved with um, Bumpe over in Sierra Leone to put seven wells in um, uh, where our Princess uh, Culbertson's family is from. So we're involved in many ways throughout uh, the community, the, the, the nation, and the international. So um, if you want to check out our website, it's improving on a daily basis. Um, also, uh, we were very involved in um, coming up with the foundational um, bylaws for different neighborhood associations. And we were one of the, uh, one of the first um, 
groups to uh, get our certificate, nonprofit certificate, and so forth. So um, those are what you can use. Anyway, so um, here we have our annual picnic uh, and some pictures from our annual picnic um, down there. Um, we have our annual picnic um, that Bopark helps us support with their um, tent and so forth, and we greatly enjoy that. Uh, um, the middle picture is about drops. We've been working with MUB to identify all the drops in Suncrest, so that's just some of the things that we do. Um, some of our recent activities and outreach, which are um, on our welcome page on our website, you can do that on our website or your copy when you receive this or um, on the Morgantown um, website for more about that. Um, two of the big things in Suncrest are our Pompano Run and Burroughs Run. Suncrest, as you know, is a flat area in Morgantown, so therefore we're a bowl. And we're a bowl that has the privilege of uh, collecting all the water from all around this bowl. And so um, residents worked very hard over the last uh, 10 years for, um, and I'm gonna say it's a $9 million project as the city partnered with the state, but don't quote me on numbers. They're not my better thing. But um, Pompano runs and Burrow uh, when flow channels were worked on so that the excessive stream would, um, we have less flooding on our streets and in our basements. But what is ha one of the challenges is though that since everybody wants to be in Suncrest and is developing the <coughs> sides of Suncrest, the headwaters of those two streams are being encroached upon either by the university or developers or um, uh, various individuals. Streets. And so what happens is we're still having this water flow problem. Uh, so our challenges are maintaining our community schools, um, of course the zoning, development, rentals, and enforcement of such traffic from shortcutting. Um, I was at one presentation that said one of our streets, Killarney, was one of the major traveled roads in the um, city at this time. Um, and of course we're, we're a good place for parking for the university event. As the um, athletic department is expanding, the parking building has not expanded, and so um, our neighbors um, are picking up the slack. But picking up the slack means that emergency vehicles can't get through. It means some neighbors can't get out of their driveways. So um, this needs to be addressed uh, with the university. <coughs> uh, the noise from the university originally was just a few events, and it's getting to be more and more events um, um, that we need to talk about over time with the university, um, such as the Victoria's Secret event last year. Um, there was some language that made it very difficult for neighbors to sleep with and people with young kids to abide by. Uh, county emergencies, we are now surrounded, as I said, and if there's a fire in West Run, the, um, the what I call the ra uh, air raid signal goes off in Star City and in Granville, and then so we go back to London and the turn of the century, and then a, um, um, all the emergency vehicles surround Suncrest with their sirens going, and so um, we need to look at those kinds of things in terms of noise. Um, dumpsters in and adjoining R1, um, pickup times. I know you've already heard enough about this from Allied, and we have the same trouble actually on two streets in Upper Suncrest, one being Kenmore, that this woman was, a, um, because the woman that spoke of today about, we have the same problem on two of our streets where um, I believe, I told them to call you, but where um, the grandfathering of the suburban sanitation is exact right. parallel. Right. Um, so we're always, there's, that's always happening. Um, but what we have, I believe, uh, we've got to look at our noise ordinance related to dumpsters adjoining R1 properties. We have outdated trucks, um, lack of screening. I saw my first real dumpster fire the other day, and it wasn't downtown. And I started thinking, why don't I see dumpster fires elsewhere? Well, because dumpsters are normally screened off by vegetation and and um, fencing in other parts of the world and country. So we need to look at the lack of screening because it's not only unsightly, but the dumpsters are on the roads in Suncrest. And so welcome to Suncrest and you drive down Collins Ferry and you see three dumpsters, so on and so forth. So we need to look at that. Um, of course, we have lighting and safety on streets, walkways and crosswalk issues. As you're um, walking, uh, we'd like to have a walkable community and we've been working on that. And, um, and of course, we have our stormwater management issues, and we've been working with MUB in the city now to fill in needed codes, because the non-permeable surfaces that come from development are coming into our <coughs> bowl. Um, what I want to say is uh, thank you to many people in the recent doings. 
uh, to the Donaldsons. Ruthie Donaldson was recognized by the Dominion Post for her community involvement um, um, for the safety of school buses on Van Voorhis. And I will say, um, we've also been working on the safety of school buses on Killarney. Um, her husband, Dr. Donaldson, has been the Ward Commission Chair and co-authored our first, well, one of our first 1980 <coughs> Master Plans, which if you read today, the same issues are there. Uh, of course, uh, it's hard to say, but uh, I was re also recognized by the Dominion Post uh, to be involved with the challenges of rental properties in neighborhoods. And we passed a nuisance party ordinance, and I never did hear if um, it's ever been in use. I'd, I'd be interested to find out if that ordinance ever was used and if any citations took place. I've never heard of it. Um, Matt Cross and Jim Culverson are vocal promoters of need for zoning um, and with uh, working with the planning office to publicize variances in the area. And as you know, Matt is a uh, publisher of several timely articles uh, to the editor of Dominion Post. Um, Linda Herbst, thank you for being the concerned neighbor who has inquired and prompted you to run for city council and get off the ground running, particularly in the water problems we've had in our neighborhood. Uh, Alan Hood has led the neighborhood watch program in the city for 18 years and we're um, hoping to expand that through the neighborhood coordinating council. Scott Pruitt has worked with the cleanup of Suncrest Lake wetlands and um, we've planted rain gardens down there. So these are just a few doings of things that are going on in Suncrest. As you know, Suncrest people are very involved in every commission committee and we're working to keep that going. Um, Roy Nutter and Chris Block are very involved in um, planning and the tra uh, traffic commission. I want to just thank uh, Ron Gillis for his involvement in keeping Calvary Baptist Church for SNA meetings, and he's a, he makes a great pot of coffee. And then Don Spencer, who works tirelessly in the past to represent our neighborhood and is still involved in fracking issues, and we're thankful for that. Jenny, thank you for what you've done, all this, uh, the support you've given us inside and out. Um, the past president, Ed Sneckenberger, has always been an advocate for community causes, and he worked with Ron Justice. Um, for the Burroughs Pompano Run Stormwater Project. Lynn Dombrowski is working on our website and helped with this. Thank you, Lynn. Um, Bill Graham, um, who is the previous fire chief, now is training emergency responders. We're hoping to be the um, first place with the CERT program to go along. CERT is emergency preparedness, um, to go along with our neighborhood watch program. So he's going to help us with that, and he's involved in our master planning efforts. Oh, I think I forgot two people. Uh, Mike Oliverio is once again running for office, and he has been very good in promoting things like crosswalks um, between Suncrest and WVU campuses when he was um, in office, and we're hoping that whoever's in office continues in that fashion. The most exciting thing I want to tell you is what's going on with the Safe Suncrest. Jim Dobbs, Jennifer Bell, and many other people work together to save that primary school um, from um, getting moved elsewhere. Um, and probably the most moving experience I've had in the last few years was I was the sweep up person after everybody spoke about saving Suncrest and how important it is to our community and how it's the heart of our community and so forth. And so I just randomly said, and so would anybody who wants to save Suncrest or is here with the same reason, please stand up. And I turned around and all, everybody in the University High School Auditorium um, stood up. And it was a very moving experience for any of you who were there. So that's the good things about Suncrest, is, and we're able to support the primary school remaining in the heart of our neighborhood. Um, just wanted to just say that um, Don Spencer is one of the impressive um, people who come from Suncrest, who, as you all know, is a, a, um, provided a lot of city government leadership, even helped get the Neighborhood Coordinating Council going, which we're all speaking about right now, um, and was very involved in um, starting commissions and committees that um, neighbors are on. So we want to thank Don very much. So thank you very much for listening on SunTrust and uh, we're looking forward to further dialogue. <laughs> okay, thank you, Nancy. <laughs> We're watching Morgantown 15, Morgantown's Government Access Channel.